The research shows that access to healthy food actually improves the health of citizens. And when that uh, healthy food is not available, the health of citizens suffers. Obesity rates go up, heart issues go up, diabetes issues go up. There's just a myriad of uh, health-related diseases that show an increase when access to healthy food is not there. Millions of rural residents face limited choices and low quality in their retail food options. An important source of healthy rural food access is the retail grocery store. Unfortunately, these rural businesses are struggling, and many are closing their doors. The 6th National Rural Grocery Summit, June 25th and 26th in Manhattan, sponsored by Kansas State University and a broad range of partners, will focus on how best to sustain rural grocery stores and improve the health of those living in rural communities. On today's Sound Living, the importance of rural grocery stores. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. David Proctor, Director for Engagement and Community Development, Rural Grocery Initiative at Kansas State University, says the National Rural Grocery Summit was started in 2007 to help sustain and to bring grocery stores to rural Kansas. And every other year we host one of these rural grocery summits. And the goal is really to think of just a variety of topic areas, uh, information areas, technical assistance areas that might help these small businesses. And so we do tend to uh, have just a, a great variety of topics. I think everyone knows that rural grocery stores are struggling. A lot of stores are struggling. But when it comes to the rural areas, this is a real blow to those communities. Absolutely. We believe that, and, and we have done research that demonstrates that these small businesses, the real grocery store, is really an anchor institution in small towns across Kansas. They are um, a vital source of uh, health and nutrition. They have really, the in, in, in rural communities, they have the largest quantity and, and the greatest variety of uh, healthy foods available. They are also a place where economic development happens. So they're hiring a great number of people to work in these stores. They're paying a significant amount of property taxes, sales taxes, tax monies that go to build local parks, build you know sidewalks, uh, street lights, uh, the infrastructure that all communities need to have. And then finally, these small businesses are community hubs. They're really where people gather and see friends and see neighbors and catch up on the latest news. And so they're a special kind of business, and, and we think it's really important to do what we can, what Kansas State University can, to uh, help sustain those stores. And the research is showing that this is a vital need, this access to healthy food. Absolutely. The research shows that access to healthy food actually improves the health of citizens. And when that healthy food is not available, the health of citizens suffers. Obesity rates go up. Heart issues go up, diabetes issues go up. There's just a myriad of uh, health-related diseases that show an increase when access to healthy food is not there. The summit will feature a number of breakout sessions, and by and large, it's kind of falling along the lines of grocery operations or healthy food access and even some funding discussions. That's exactly it. We've tried to think about uh, the different types of topics, as I mentioned, that, that are important. And they really do fall into those categories. So we want to talk about things like grocery operations, and we'll talk about customer service issues. We'll talk about management issues, best models for ownership and management of these grocery stores. We'll also talk about healthy food access and ways to increase sales of healthy food in these stores. And we'll talk a, a lot at the summit about why healthy food is important for rural communities. I think all small businesses are looking for any kind of uh, uh, leg up in terms of funding that they might identify. And, and we do have, I think, some interesting and maybe things that folks don't know about in terms of funding sources that are available for uh, small town businesses. I know you've been studying this for a long time. What are we seeing in terms of the reasons for why the grocery stores can't make it in the smaller communities? Is it the access to food that they can resell? You know, I think that there's a there's a number of reasons why these why these stores struggle. One is that, you know, unfortunately, large swaths of uh, rural America 
is experiencing population decline. And so the population base that's there to, uh, to go into these stores is, is declining. In addition, uh, you know, the United States is a very mobile society. And so you have uh, folks that are living in small towns and they're working in some metropolitan center, you know, 15, 20, 30 miles away. And oftentimes they do their shopping uh, while they're there. So what we try and do is we try to think about, well, what are the advantages? What are the competitive advantages that small town stores might have? And, and really it comes down to they are really part of that community. They have an investment, a huge investment in that community. And so uh, we want them to uh, highlight that, to stress that, to point that out. We're glad to help them do that. We're glad to help them make that case. But really, community support is unbelievably vital. There are uh, very small towns across Kansas and across the United States where the grocery store is thriving. And one of the, one of the biggest reasons is that there is uh, robust community support for that store. In terms of ownership, are you finding that it is oftentimes someone who just lives in the community, maybe a family, or are they starting to do this more as a community-wide project? The trend is, is fairly slight right now, but we think that the, that the trend line is to move more toward community-owned businesses, community-owned stores in these small towns. You know, you don't really find a whole lot of – there's not a whole lot of evidence that, that people within the community, that one individual within the community will step up and, and buy a grocery store. Now, there are some entrepreneurs that own multiple stores across Kansas, and sometimes they'll see an opportunity in a, in a town where the store closes. But they already have the experience. They already have, uh, you know, the communication network, the distribution network. And so they might come in and, and, and pick up that store. But more and more, we're seeing communities think about owning and running the grocery store as a cooperative. Or possibly there are some that are actually doing it now as a not-for-profit operation. There are some communities where uh, it is a partnership between local government and an entrepreneur. So we refer to that as public-private operations. And so you do see this more communal kind of ownership model I think, occurring more and more all the time. I think at one point we were talking about the possibility of having more of a centralized warehouse where the communities could go and get the things they needed. You know, there, there is some interesting research out there that, that uh, is looking at these different distribution models. The distribution to, uh, of groceries to small town grocery stores is maybe one of the, I, I believe, maybe one of the most complex issues out there and one of the toughest issues to crack. And, and this idea of a centralized warehouse, I think it holds promise, but there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, moving parts. And, you know, you, you do have to set up uh, some kind of communication system and a management system and a trucking system and a, and a warehouse system and an inventory system. And unless there is a, a, a lead organization that somebody is, is willing to step up and, and, and sort of coordinate all of that, it's really a challenge for multiple individual stores to, to make that happen. In terms of fresh fruit and vegetables, are we seeing that there is a connection between those rural grocery stores and local farmers? You know, there is some of that, which is another reason why these stores we think are so important, because not only are they providing uh, healthy you know, fruits and vegetables to their community, but many times they are supporting uh, local growers in the area. So it's not unusual to walk into small town grocery stores during this time of year and, and, and really all summer and fall and see tomatoes or corn or cucumbers or green peppers or whatever it might be that are coming from a farmer that is, you know, that, 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 that is really part of the community as well. Another thing that's happening that we think is also very exciting is that some of these grocery stores are turning their parking lot over to a farmer's market once a week. And in this case, they'll, there'll be multiple uh, local growers that will bring their produce into town or their, you know, their fresh meat into town. And uh, again, it's a way that these businesses, these small businesses, are supporting local farmers uh, in, in their area. This is important, especially, I'm assuming, for some of the at-risk people in the community, the elderly who maybe don't drive and uh, maybe someone else who has young children and doesn't have the flexibility to go 20 or 30 miles. You've hit it on the head. You know, 
I said a little bit ago that we're a mobile society uh, and folks, you know, they work out of town, they shop out of town. But, you know, there are categories of folks in these small towns where mobility is not so easy, where transportation is an issue. You know, I have uh, both my parents are still alive, uh, thank goodness. But it's, I don't think it's great if they're uh, out on the road at night driving 30 miles round trip to, you know, buy a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk. And I think there's probably a lot of folks that are listening to the radio today that would say the same thing about their parents or their grandparents. And so the small town grocery store is important because they can either have a friend, you know, go to the store for them, or maybe they can, you know, they can still drive in that small town, or maybe it's close enough they can walk. So that's an issue. But, and then the other issue is there, you know, there is poverty in, in our rural communities. And with that poverty sometimes comes unreliable transportation. And so this idea that you can just hop in your car and drive 30 miles round trip, 40 miles round trip to a grocery store, that just isn't the case for some people. And really it affects those families and, and, and the children in those families a lot. This is a national summit, and that really makes sense because this is not just a Kansas issue. Do you get people coming in from out of state? We are very excited about the lineup of speakers that we have this year. Uh, they are coming from, I, I think, the right now, the summit is not for about another three weeks, but right now uh, I think we've got about 15 different states that are going to be represented there. Two of our keynote speakers are a national funder, a uh, USDA representative from, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a National Grocery Association, a person from that organization is coming to talk about grocery trends, and that's a, that's a national sort of perspective that he's going to give. We're also bringing a grocer in from uh, Alabama who uh, runs a small town grocery store and is doing amazing things around uh, food distribution, servicing, as we just talked about, elderly and, and, and folks in poverty in his community. He's uh, driving to Atlanta to service a, an urban grocery store. I mean, just a really interesting guy that's got an interesting story that shows the possibilities. So we have, you know, we have those two keynote speakers that are coming from across the country. But we have, I know that we have grocers from uh, Minnesota, uh, North Dakota, Nebraska, Illinois. Um, that's just off the top of my head. So uh, I, it's going to be a, it is going to be a national perspective, but uh, the vast majority of presentations, the vast majority of folks that are going to be there are going to be Kansans. And it is a two-day summit. And as I mentioned earlier, there are a number of breakout sessions, some of them running concurrently, but you really have a chance to bounce back and forth and really hit the areas that are of most interest to you. Absolutely right. You can go uh, on our Rural Grocery website, uh, ruralgrocery.org, and there's a link to the conference on that site. And you can go to the conference, and we have the agenda online right now, and you can see the kinds of presentations and the kinds of speakers and where they're from right now. The other thing that I think is uh, – that I really like about this summit is – that it's not so jam-packed that there's not time to spend time in the hallways talking with people. So that if, uh, you know, if some of the listeners come to the, to the summit and they hear a speaker that they really like, there will be opportunities, break times, lunch times. Uh, we have a reception one evening where uh, they could talk to these folks and say, tell me about, you know, how it's going in Peabody, Kansas, or, uh, you know, how it's going in Jamestown, North Dakota, or wherever, you know, the speakers might be from. So uh, that gives folks another opportunity to uh, uh, understand the kinds of uh, information that's being presented. It'll be June 25th and 26th, as you mentioned, in Manhattan. And again, if they want to register, ruralgrocery.org. That is correct. And if you have any questions, you could uh, you can go to that, that same website. Our contact information is on that site. Give us a call. Uh, we have emails on that site. Email us. Uh, we would love to have a conversation with you and, and uh, just would love to see you all uh, in Manhattan on June 25 and 26. That's David Proctor, Director for Engagement and Community Development, Rural Grocery Initiative at Kansas State University. The National Rural Grocery Summit will be held in Manhattan June 25th and 26th. To find out more about the summit, visit ruralgrocery.net. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman, and this is the K-State Radio Network.